Do you have these key comics in your PC? Welcome back comic book fans, it's Rusty again with Collector Auctions and today we're going to pick up right where we left off on Monday's show by reviewing the comics that I ended up getting from Third Eye Comics. Now I introduced them last week that I was going to be doing some of the books from Third Eye but as I realized and I was doing the editing, the show was going really long and I'm trying to cut these times down a little bit. So I decided to take this whole segment, all the books I've been picking up these back issues, these key comics, I'm back, I'm going to go do them today. We'll just make it its own segment today, make it its own episode. These are some really good books. I'm sure you're going to enjoy them. But before we begin, please hit that like button, slap the subscribe, and definitely hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my shows on Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. So I hope you join me each and every week. And definitely follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And check out my links on in the description for eBay where I sell a lot of my books. A lot of the books I get graded are for sale. Some of my specials are on Instagram right now. You can DM me or you can go to my link and go to my, visit my eBay store where I've got just about every slab that I own that I want to sell right now. It's on there. I'm sure you'll find some good deals if you're looking for some good keys. So let's sit back. Enjoy this footage from Monday's show. As I said, this was all filmed a week ago, and it was supposed to be part of last week's show, so I'm doing a new intro, and I want to sit back, enjoy this, and I'm going to come back, and we'll talk about the books at the very end. So stay tuned and enjoy this. All right, the last batch of books I ended up picking up was from Third Eye Comics down in Annapolis, Maryland. Now, there are many different Third Eye Comics around, especially in this area right here around Maryland and down in towards the D.C. area a little bit. But Third Eye Comics, the flagship station store is in Annapolis, Maryland, and I go down there. I don't go down there quite as much as I used to as I have cut back on especially my new comic book day hauls, but I continue to go down there every couple weeks, and they have expanded their wall section with a lot of keys, and they're real good about putting stickers on there and letting you know if a key is a key if you didn't already know, and sometimes the prices are good. Sometimes I think they're vastly overpriced, Depending on the book, I've picked up some there that I have I thought was a, actually a decent value, but I, because of the, the condition, I just didn't think it was going to grade out as much as, as well as I really wanted it to. So I've put back, but I did pick up some books on one of my last trips down here, and these are all keys. And then I had something special uh, as the last book, and I'll go over that at the end. But let's just start. And I'll show you what I've picked up. This is Amazing Fantasy number one. This came out in August of 2004. This is the first appearance, appearance of Arana. And am I wrong? Is she going to appear at least partially in the new animated Miles Morales Spider-Man movie? I, If you guys know that, let me know about that. But I know this is her first appearance. And you will find, while this book has gone down in value, it's fluctuating a lot right now. You will find more 9.8s of this. It's a modern book, 2004. Of course, you're going to find more 9.8s on the census. But I, as I was trying to give you, I always try to give you the most recent price that I've seen it go. I don't give you a fair market value because two days later, a book may, I'll tell you the book is $100, and then two days later, you'll see it go for 150 and you're going, what are you talking about, Russ? You're all wrong. So normally what I give you is the last price that I see a book go for. But if the time range is very close and I see a fluctuation in prices, just like this book, I'll give that to you. So what, literally what I have seen in the basically this last two months right here, this book has gone from as cheap as $114 to about $165 for a 9.8 graded. So that's a pretty big range. I will get this in the, just like the rest of these books. We'll get them in the shop and hopefully they'll grade out to the 9.8. I don't know if the book has dropped down to 114 though, a 9.6 is going to drop below the $100 mark. So I probably won't send that in the CGC if I get it in the shop and I find any kind of real defects that I can't take care of. The next book is one that... Actually, I just literally sold the second 
graded 9.8 of this out of my collection. So I can tell you what I sold it for. I ended up selling that 9.8 for $175. If you go on Go Collect, you're going to see a best offer taken for a $200 book. And that's I, I accepted at $175. And I did that really more to move the book. I could have held out a little bit, but I'm not in the business of holding books forever. And I went ahead and sold the second of those 9.8s that I had. So I literally replaced, another, here we go again, I replaced a book that I had just sold in my PC. This book right here, I don't know if I'm going to end up getting it graded. It looked really good in the store, and you get it back to the house, and you get it, take a little closer look, and that black is a little unforgiving, and there is a little bit of a tick over here that I can't tell how much of a color break it really is. So I don't know if I'll get this end up getting this graded, but I will work on it and get it back up and grade. If nothing else, it will be a key in my PC, just as a raw. It is the first appearance of Hope Summers, if you guys are wondering what the key significance to this book is. But came out in January 2008. I wasn't a big fan of the X-Men books at this time, but I'll tell you this, I love the David Finch cover on this and the Lady Deathstrike imagery are here. I love that. I'm always a big fan of her, especially when when Barry Windsor Smith did a issue where she became the this version of Lazy Deathstrike that we know today. So good stuff, good stuff. So that is a great book. This book right here is one that I picked up from Third Eye as well. This is Batman number 612. Now I've got a graded 9.8 in my PC. It is it was a raw book that I had bought when it came out, I got it, worked on it, got it great. It was in great, I kept it in great shape, got a 9.8 on that. But I'm always looking to pick up other books like this, especially if I think I got it graded because it had some value to it. Now that pro value has gone down a lot as well. So it's one of the reasons it hasn't sold. Um, if you guys don't know, this is the part of that Jim Lee Hush storyline. And there's no real key significance to this, but this was always my favorite issue with Superman on there. And came out in April 2003. And here's another case where in the course of March, just the last couple of days, this book has sold for as little as $85 as a 9.8, but as much as $150 as a 9.8. Now, I think I've got this probably listed for around that 125 mark. So it's going to be a little interesting to see where the current market really is on this at this exact moment. One of the things I've seen is eBay sellers will go in there, they'll try to give you a comp uh, price on something that just sold. And that may be the case, but if that was a low from some seller, but then it, you turn around and you look at the other copies that are available on eBay, and none of them are even close to that price, sometimes I will turn down an offer for what to match what just sold because, well, there are no other options. You you can't buy another one for that price because all the other ones are up a much higher price level. I think that's why we're seeing this price. We'll see a cheap one go, and then the next one up is actually a lot higher than you would have expected. So we'll see if that one will ever sell, but I will try to get this one back into the shop at some point. I will get this in the shop and work on it. We'll get it in the CGC again. Hopefully we get another 9.8. All right, now I've got some some bigger keys here. I picked up, I didn't think I was going to end up picking up another copy of Young Avengers number one ever. Wasn't on the radar. This book, I got had them get it down off their wall. It was only $50, and I think I had a discount code that day for a few dollars less than that even. This book's in really good shape, but there is a little bit of a defect over here. I don't know how color breaking, I don't think it's too bad. We'll see. Then hopefully we'll get that into that 9.6 range. 9.6s literally just sold here in this last week, first week in March, for, again, another range from $162 up to $200. And that's not bad. As I said, I put this, this was $50. I got it for a few dollars less than that. So let's just say about $45. If I can get this graded for that, and even a 9.6, I will be able to make my money at this. Now, I sold this out of my PC. It was my personal copy. I got a great, I got a 9.8 on it and I ended up selling it and not, that I didn't regret it at all. It was great. That helped pay for a lot of other orders. But I know the current market is actually down right now 
for a 9.8. 9.8 first week in March went for $454, and I can say I I ended up selling that for a lot more. A lot, lot more, but definitely more than that when I sold mine about six or seven months ago. So anyway, I'm looking, maybe there's an outside shot that this one get another 9.8. That's why I went ahead and pulled the trigger and bought that book that day. Same day. Now, the books prior to this one I'd bought about, these were two different trips down the third eye. So it's this was not all during one trip, but the Young Avengers and the next two, well, three books were all in the very last trip that I went down. But I picked this up right here. This is from Kamiko, or as I used to call them, Con I take that back. I take that back. Is it Kamiko? Yeah, it is Kamiko. I thought maybe it might have been Capital Comics. But it is from Kamiko, or Comico as I used to call them. This is Mage Number 1, The Hero Discovered. This is from Matt Wagner. This came out in May of 1984. This was his own creation. I love the storyline. It's sort of a Merlin storyline. If you guys have never read this, I used to collect these books and read them, and I've got several of these things signed by Matt Wagner over the years, and there's been several different series. This was the first issue. They had it as the first appearance of Kevin Matchstick, and I don't know if that's actually true or not, even though Third Eye said it did. Uh, trying to look it up, I didn't find that when I was looking the book up for the prices and everything. But for about $20, I think it was about $20. Hang on. Oh, I take that back. I paid a little bit more. This one's closer to that 50 mark as well. But it's a book that I never had. I had many books from this series. I'm not even sure how many it went. But I never had number one. And the condition, especially with this black, dark color over here, I bought it based on the condition, and nine eights, surprisingly, is, even for a book that old, is the most graded books you'll find on the census in this. It's a $340 value. One just went back in February for that much on eBay. So this is a book I kind of wanted more for the PC than to resell, but we'll see what kind of grade we get once we get that into CGC. Uh, that $340 actually kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting a book this kind of book to be that expensive. So that might be a pretty good investment by the time I'm done with it. And then the last book that I ended up buying, and I wasn't necessarily in the market for this, but there it was on their wall. It's $100, $109 actually. It is a direct edition of Thor number 337, the very first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. This is from October of 1983. Now, I own a... 9.6 version that I cleaned and pressed. I own that's just a universal grade, and now and then I own a signed 9.6 from Walt Simonson himself. And that is my keeper. The other one, the graded one, I, I will probably sell at some point, but the the signature series one is definitely one that it will stay in the PC for a long time. It's a book that means a lot to me. Walt Simonson and his wife Louise had lived a lot of years here in the Baltimore, Washington area, more like, I should say, the Washington area. They lived, there, I think, in the suburbs, and you used to see them all the time at the serendipity shows that you would find down in Silver Spring, Maryland. And I many visits going down there, getting many books signed by him and Louise, and I've got a signed copy of this that's a raw that has a nasty water stain. I think it's water. I don't know. Down here at the bottom. They'll never be able to get that out. I don't think. It's just, it's too much. So it's definitely something to stay in the PC. And last year I was able to get a really nice copy of this off of Heritage that I worked on. Took it with me to Charlotte Heroes Con back in June where I had it facilitated after an Walt signed it, and we got it into CGC, and I got that 9.6. I was really happy and really impressed with that. But I found this at Third Eye Comics on the wall, just like at Young Avengers there, and I thought, wow, this doesn't pop up all, all the time at stores like this. They have some keys, but sometimes it's not some the bigger keys. And I had them get it down, and let's take a look at it. And I thought, $110 for this. I think, I'm not sure. The market, again, is down. I think I was happy to pay that, especially I think I got a few dollars off again with that discount code. This is a really sharp cover. You got a white cover, but you have a dark line over here. 
Let me see if I can show it to you. Let's see. The line that stops the artwork from going around the spine, there's a dark line, that's where the artwork stops. And that's the part where you gotta worry about getting those color ticks. Now on a white, you don't, we're not really gonna notice it, but that black, that line all the way up and down, if anything pops up there, then you're talking less than a 9.8. Well, this was super clean and I'm kind of excited about getting this one in there and let's hopefully we'll get another high grade on that. Now. The last book that I ended up picking up was a giveaway from Third Eye. It that particular day they were I'm trying they were giving away signed copies of these books right here. Let me just show you. It's Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, and this was right on the heels of the James Gunn announcement that his Supergirl project for DCU was going to be based on the was it Tom Taylor, right? Is that right? I'm sorry, Tom King. I don't know why I did it. Tom King series. And Third Eye did a promotion on that particular day, New Comic Book Day, that it, the first, I think, 10 or 15 in line, we're going to get signed copies of Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. I thought they were going to all be issue ones. This actually is issue number eight. So I think I was about 10th in line. So definitely some of the guys, some of the people in line got issue number one signed. Now, they had just done a signing with Tom King there, and I didn't go to that. I've gotten Tom King on several books before, and I didn't need, he didn't need him on anything. But I was happy to go down maybe about 20 minutes early and get in line. If, if I was there early enough and I got one, great. If not, I was still going to be there for New Comic Book Day. But I got a nice signed copy. I'm, And another part is, I'm not really a fan of his signature. Let's go a little bit closer. Do you see it right, right there? I mean, I can't say, you know, as a big autograph collector, I am not a fan of people who do autographs like that. It is, I think, maybe that's, I don't know if that's his true autograph or that's his public signing autograph. My guess is it's the latter. But so I'm not, it's not an autograph that is very desirable in my opinion, but it is desirable, I guess, on a book like this that's going to be relevant because of the James Gunn and everything. But that was a nice free giveaway for that day. Can't go wrong with free giveaways like that. And can't say much, too much bad about Third Eye. They do treat their customers really well there. If you guys ever get a chance to visit uh, Annapolis, Maryland, stop by Third Eye Comics. There are other locations and around the area and I think there's one down in Richmond. I think there's one out in the West Coast. I'm not even sure about that. But definitely check out the one in Annapolis. It is the mother store. It has got so much stuff in there. You can go wrong with get they actually have two different sh stores in the same building. One of them is devoted to games and to records and things like that. I've only visited that store once. While the comic store has a lot of comics, not a lot of older comics. Don't go in there expecting to find Silver Age, very much Silver Age. And you're not gonna you're gonna find a little bit of back ends, but you will find a ton of brand new comic books. Their wall of comics, new modern comics, and their variants. They buy so many comics that the variant ratios that they have is enormous. And it's one of the reasons I, I ended up going there just about every new comic book day. But I'm I digress. Great books. Give this guy a chance. Love Third Eye Comics. And I hope to get down there pretty soon for maybe the next comic book day. So guys, what did you think about the books that I picked up in Third Eye Comics? I thought these are some nice keys. It's funny that a couple in here are ones that I keep picking up after I get them graded and I end up selling them and I get them back in the PC. And I'm always glad to pick up another copy of Walt Simonson's Thor 337 one of the most iconic covers of the 1980s. But tell me what you think about it by leaving me a comment in the comment section. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this footage. Join me Monday when we come back and we'll go over some other key comics. I may visit another comic book store over the weekend. We'll see. We may. You never know what I'm going to do on this channel, but I hope that I give you content each and every week that you can take out and use for yourself, and hopefully it's useful to you. And I enjoy talking to you guys. Thank you for the support, and thank you for watching today, and I will see you on Monday. And remember, every comic has a story.